Detroit music, my relationship to it is uh, my birthright. So as I'm born here um, from time immemorial, my bloodline is time immemorial here. So it's the sound and the vibe and the land and then like all the, the cool things that come into Detroit that make that sound of Detroit. Um, and my relationship to Detroit is, uh, my relationship is growing up and living here. You know, you got uh, this amazing history of Motown and soul and black music inside the city. And then you got like, you know, this electronic sound emerging and hip hop. So overall, my relationship to Detroit music is just being my birthright. It's like, you know, my, uh, it's my rights of being here and living here. And it's like a, uh, definitely a connection I should uphold and uplift. So right now I'm just, uh, uh, fulfilling, fulfilling my duties and my destiny and make sure I don't betray that and not do Detroit music, so. Can you talk a little bit about, uh, before we talk about the Kipti specifically, can you just tell me a little bit about um, uh, the 48210-ish, whatever, that, that area that you're, you're working in? Can you just describe it a little bit? Um, so I, um, in Southwest Detroit, which is around 48209 and 4210, so I've been living in 48209 for a while uh, before I was displaced by the bridge and displaced by different factors. Uh, but now we're in 48210, so it's like cousins and family is always in 48210, which is kind of up the street. <laughs> so it was back and forth. So my relationship with different sides of the southwest and west side are deeply rooted here. Um, and the work I'm doing in 48210 um, is around music, is culture and arts, um, and like uplifting youth, and not even youth, but just new people that want to get into music. So we do a lot of uh, music engagement that way, from, from the kids to the elders, to a live audience, to uh, students learning the, the essence of music and culture and arts in Detroit. We're, uh, we've asked this to a number of our, our musicians that we brought in this last week. Uh, how would you describe your training as a musician? My training as a musician is uh, growing up poor. Growing up poor and dealing with violence and dealing with oppression. Uh, because all that pain and that struggle, it really gives to this soulful grid I have. You know, it's like I'm a soul trying to live and bloom here, but at the same time, you got police, you got white supremacy, you got racism, you got homophobia, all kinds of things right here that keep people down. So it's like the struggle just to be human and have that soul is what really kind of makes that sound is that grit and that struggle uh, coming up and moving forward through that. So no, no, uh, no elementary school music program, no church on Sunday choir, no any of that then for you particularly then? I played music in elementary school. Uh, in a public school and they were supporting those arts and works um, and that was in elementary so I picked up uh, the piano and violin um, before that I went to a Catholic school and they made us play the kazoo and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and then I couldn't afford to be there so I got kicked out and then we went to the local school and that's where I picked up music because uh, like to be in the Catholic school to like you needed to pay more to do music so I'm like damn we're already paying enough to be here so like the public school structure definitely in school helped out that a lot. Like, you know, learning just instrument and sounds like, oh, this is a cool instrument. Like just to have access to more than a guitar, you know, from that aspect, like a, a violin, like the, the, the sensitivity and the, the, the delicateness that comes with it and the sounds and the way you deal with it. So it's like elementary really kind of taught me to appreciate different instruments and then just playing those things, um, all kinds of instruments and, uh, specifically piano, drums, um, and the violin were kind of my roots. And then I went through a whole history of like trying to go to the right schools. You know, I went for a tr school for troubled kids or whatever, whatever that those things are. And there was no, there was no music there. There were some people that supported and wanted to bring a violin and like, oh, you played the violin. And, but like also was lacking certain discipline, like how to tune it by myself and like, how to do different things to care for it more than playing Mary Had a Little Lamb or Hot Cross Buns on it. You know, it was like going to more pieces. 
So it's like spent a few years without instrumentation or just uh, playing music. And um, with music, there is this thing you can order like 15 CDs or something or 20 CDs from like a catalog or something, mm -hmm. pre-online shopping. And we just bought all the biggie, all the hip hop stuff. And then that's when we got like a another experience with music too. Uh, because it was like, get free music and just write address and music came in. <laughs> it was bugged out. But that was the middle passages. And then as I got into high school, we played jazz. I play a lot of Latin jazz specifically because of the neighborhood. I'm in the Southwest, 48209, 48210. There's a lot of Latin influence or Latin, Latinidad, Latin America. So we had a bunch of cool percussions and rhythms and grooves. And I was looking to take a, a step further with playing. And the school, unfortunately, didn't have a violin, but they had the trumpet. And I already could read music, and that's was like, all right, I hop on a trumpet. The jazz program's like, we're trying to do something new with Latin jazz and the historical jazz history in Detroit. You want to you wanna try, little kid? And I'm like, yeah, I want to try. <laughs> so I, I learned trumpet very intensely at Western International High School under the direction of Stan Baywell. Um, we had a couple, all kinds of jazz people come in and like teach methods and techniques. One thing I remember was... Um, um, bringing in the trombone uh, and trumpet players, uh, Branford and Witten Marcellus, they would do intense workshops with us. So I got to learn how to use my trumpet from them. <laughs> and that was cool. And it was one of those programs, you know, like we're the poor ghetto kids. So we got to come do some music engagement in the, in the hardest hit schools. And that was before I, you know, we started realizing we were poor and all this extra so social, uh, social political things inside like there. But yeah, they came to school, we learned and I tightened up my, uh, my ability and I just learned how to, compose and read and play and I, w I wanted to take it further because I'm like there's got to be more shit than like playing inside the trump you know like more arrangement and I'm looking at the the conductor I'm like wow this is really fascinating so um, there was a barrier with that because we didn't have instruments like we just if this you were in school you had it but after a while like if you weren't like playing using it or playing in those programs like you had nothing so like what I really appreciated was like learning this electronic stuff because I would make drum loops on a tape deck and I'd practice on my, my, my jazz rhythms on all my things just on a break beat, like over and over. And then I was just listening to hip hop more because I'm like, these compositions and arrangements doesn't sound like what I'm playing. Like what's going on here? It's like loopy and weird and notes are off and all these things. And that's when I fell in love with hip hop music and electronic music was like this ability to compose and range like without having to be limited like yo I need like this whole string I need this whole string arrangement over here I need the crazy percussion and like when you broke in in the ghetto that it might be a little bit hard difficult to do if you're not tied into the certain music scenes or different things in there so that's like a quick short roundabout and how I got to hear with these things with these electronic musics and hip-hop and things like that and I really enjoy that element of having those jazz roots like learning you know, doing like the exercise or like music, uh, music, like the whole framework and theory and all that, like, and then learning it and then breaking all the rules with this stuff. And that's what I really enjoy now. And I, I still, I, I travel and tour. I was just in Colorado playing some music, engaging people with music too. And that's like, I'm with music right now and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do this until the casket comes, so. Do you need a break or we get a couple more, more questions? Uh, I was just gonna say briefly, I saw Branford Marcellus with this group he had in the 90s called Buckshot La Funk. Remember them? Mm -mm. He had like a like a fusion kind of band. Oh, okay. And they played in Pontiac at uh, Clutch Carbos. And I met him real quick. And that was a big, big deal because he seemed to have big ears. Yeah, I was in high school like uh, early 2000s, mid 2000s. And yeah. that's when they came. Uh, uh, from them. So that yeah, was a little bit before that. Um, okay, let's get to the good stuff. Yeah. Let's Kippy. get to the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so just anything you want to say about uh, the work you're doing in terms of with, with some of the support from the Kresge Foundation? Yeah, for sure. So uh, we're building uh, pretty much a home in the community, continuing to establish the great roots and the deeply connections that happen in our homes and our houses to a public space uh, in the neighborhood, we're centralized in the neighborhood, to have a living and working experience. Um, and this project is called the HQ. And right now, we're developing that right now. Um, it's been, I believe, a couple years since we uh, won the award and we did a, a very good, solid process because we just didn't want to rush into things and just 
you know, check them off really quick. Like what we're building is here, we're building the future and the legacy of Detroit music as well. So it's very, very important that we approach that with so much like uh, uh, logistical information, details, options, run it back and forth. So it's been, it's been a bit of a, a challenge for sure, but it's a beautiful challenge. It's, be, it's better than having a gun pointed at your face or the risk of being shot every week, you know what I'm saying? So like these are good challenges to have with music in Detroit. And uh, working on this project, I'm super excited. Like as I travel to other cities and, and countries, you know, I'm looking to how do we bring all this Detroit uh, beauty out to the world and bring the world's beauty to Detroit to continue to evolve this music here. Because I know as soon as I got out this hood and was able to do more music around, like my, my experience has changed, my love changed, my compassion changed, my style changed. And but it's still like rooted in Detroit. So, you know, we're bringing Detroit worldwide. And like, you know, it's just amazing that I get to uh, travel, you know, places like Canada, Mexico, France, Europe, Austria, you know, we're looking to do a, 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 a Europe, I mean, a, a, another Europe tour in the Balkans area in February. So it's like doing another, taking Detroit sound out there too, and doing it a way where it's like really engaging rather than like in and out and I'm gone, you know, after party and performance and we out. It's like a whole engagement process. So as we bring people into Detroit, like our friends that travel, you know, it's like how do they experience the community that is breeding this music and style that they're a part of? So that's the beauty of the project. You know, we have our music guests from the world come by and the nation and even across the city, you know, like to have a space at home to really build and move and have momentum like that to build like music, arts and culture. Um, and now we're doing film portions inside there. So to have this like studio uh, meeting space, um, living space, this whole dynamic piece of uh, art. This as we go into this new uh, this new future of stuff and this new um, what you want to call it, this new this new this new vibe and vibrant feel of music in Detroit. You know, as we got all the robots and then all the airbenders and uh, string pullers. You know, like putting putting all these things together to really change and transform our communities because like if anything I've seen music do for the trans for the community is like transform it and just like through healing and being involved with it um, as a person who also went through public schools and played instruments and stuff like that there's just something incredibly powerful with the sound of music and we want to make sure we make a home for that and continue to build the legacies uh, inside Detroit so that's why it's it's amazing to share this conversation on film and, you know, document this stuff with another great organization that's committed to the values of Detroit music. So, yeah, it's like that's our project and I'm looking to continue to connect these uh, these Kresge projects, you know, that that's happening in the city. It's for us to stay connected, you know, as like uh, it's like fellows or like, you know, uh, fellow caretakers of Detroit that, you know, believe in a, a better future for not only for themselves and and for the projects, but for the community, the people that really need it here. So I'm, I'm glad to be working like this with a bunch of people. You want a break? Yeah. You'll reset the cameras here. Yeah, no problem. Memory. How you yeah. feel? Feel good? Yeah, I just, uh, I'm hoping it's all good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I would say that the, the only thing missing about the answer with the Kip D, just, it, it doesn't matter for us necessarily, mm -hmm. but it's a building on a street, you know, the specificity of it, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's on, you call it South, what would you call that, you, you took me over there, what would you yeah. call that specific spot, just Southwest? Yeah, it's like Southwest Detroit let's, for let's, sure. Let's, let's, anyway, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just maybe just, just another 25 words about like just, you know, Cressy, you, you, you purchased the building and you're sort of in the, what would you say, what phase would you say? I don't know about phases, if you like that metaphor, but what phase do you think you're in in terms of where the building is and, and the project? Where, where, where phase are you in? We're in the teenager phase where it's ugly and undeveloped. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 no. Yeah. We're, uh, we're, our building's on the southwest side. Uh, it's off of Main Street. And uh, I just, it's super dope that this building's here too, uh, on the west side, because it's like connected and it's very close. And it's just going to continue to build, like, you know, like a, a space, you know, like uh, official, uh, cool space. Because a lot of times we work out of the home or in, in public spaces, like the park or something. So it's good to have a, a accessible space, um, a building space specifically. And um, 
that what do you need to describe more about the area that area right there or? no that's that's great okay. I, that, that, that's fine that's totally, totally good mm -hmm. um so yeah just I, I think you you've hit on so many things so i think we're good i think if you could just maybe talk you were talking about trumpets and violins yeah. when was the first time you saw someone not yourself but you maybe saw someone else you know manipulate something like this live like did, or, or did you just jump into it and then find out later that other people did it too or um, it was definitely an evolution process. So um, when my cousins thought, um, when my cousins uh, acquired a computer, <laughs> <laughs> uh, off the record, <laughs> when my cousins acquired a computer, um, that's when I knew things could be moving more because like I was using a tape deck. So like I was just, just using tape, like recording tape from the sound, recording tapes back and forth. And then I was like, wow, we can do more because then I could put the trumpet on the tape. So it was like a mini two track. So you, you could, I was using it that way. And then when uh, I saw a DJ st stuff do it, I'm like, that's cool, but they're just playing recordings. I'm trying to like make the recording or like do more with it. So I begin to see like NPCs and they're like, damn, NPCs are like $10,000. They're not 10000 but when you're a young kid, that's expensive. So um, we found a computer that our cousins got and there are um, our, our uh, uh, what's you want to call it? Fruit Loops? Fruit no, it wasn't Fruit Loops. <laughs> I actually, I remember playing with Fruit Loops and I, I, ha I hated that. It was really like, it was really basic and it doesn't, it didn't allow me to breathe. Like if I can write notation into a bar graph, like a line bar graph and play it, it's way different than I'm like, oh, like <laughs> ugh, clicking it in. So I use a software that uh, does sound and digital um, imprints and that was called a program called Sony Acid. And it was like, I think like 50 bucks. It was like a shitty program, but like the way we used it, we just, we were, we were using it, not how it was supposed to be used. So, and then after a while, it just be like, how can I like play the tones of what I'm touching with rather than clicking and clicking a mouse and punching in a, another keyboard or um, what's it called? Query key, keyboards? Or, yeah, like those yeah. versus like I can imprint information from different buttons and like cue and, and turn knobs and stuff. And I'll do some of that in a second. Is it is it more like a piano or more like a drum? Um, honestly, it's what your mind can make it be. So if you got a real creative mind and you and this, the universe is infinity to you, that'd do whatever you want, except for maybe serve you coffee. And with that, uh, rock out. Yeah. <laughs> you want to reset the camera? Yeah, we can reset it. Can someone grab this real quick? I got it. It's not that long. It's about three minutes, probably. I'm about to do a song called Sweetgrass. All right. Let me just test it real quick. Or should I move or not move? Like kind of like right here, right there. Is my head is my head still in the shot? Cause I'm tall. <laughs> so I should come forward, stay forward. Or? Oh yeah, no, no, not at all. It's not really my style, huh? But like, catch me. <laughs> No, I think I think I like. Yeah, I need to hit a certain number before I can stage dive, or we can uh, fabricate it. Maybe just... when we get into the bluebird, yeah. we can talk about stage dive. Yeah. Everything's or, possible once we get into the building. Yeah, it'll be like a, what's the stuff called when you do this? Oh yeah, the trust fall. Yeah, the trust <laughs> fall. <laughs> it's like it's not stage diving; it's trust fall. Jazz heads aren't really into crowd surfing. They're just not. Play, play the trumpet on the back, like zoo, zoo, zoo. I'm bringing it back they might though. Mess up their shoes. Ooh, I feel that. I feel that. My bad. I was supposed to wear all black too. I usually wear all black when I do stuff because that's the it's the jazz vibe.
Moccasins on tight, leaping over hurdles. Slow and steady wins the race, little turtles. From quarter circles, start watching how the seasons preach, teach reasoning, nourish food with the seasoning. Quantum leap through a heap of manure. Marty McFly with my time when I maneuver through a sewer. My rhythm and blues gets bluer. Life sucks from the bottom up through down the hoover. I'm either with or against the wind. I plan grand attacks for dodge and losses and collect the wins. Shark fins to these guppies, insects that bug me, knock you out the way like you playing rugby. Dedicated to evolving my kinds as humans. Souls bright and carbon rise to a movement. Y'all already hitting errors by assuming I've been grown sunflower pads blooming. Follow me as we teach revolution, reach evolution, shaping for some newness. I'm off that old stale negative pollution, and this is that prelude to powerful music. Z shit one time. <laughs> cool. Just let me know if I should do one more. No, we just uh, stills maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just cool. do some stills. All right. And then we're done. We'll pose with this beautiful thing. Yeah. So just uh, do this part for a second. So it does turn into a keyboard, like you're just saying right here. So go. Oops. Keyboard's right there. But that those are half steps. Those are half steps. So like. If you play like a scale and stuff, or like the the notes, it'll sound different. Like, you know, like tones. Like these are half steps. So on the keyboard, that's like a half step. It's like C, C sharp, D, D sharp. So it's like that. I just remember when they made the drum machines, like the 808s. You know, they made them with a keyboard kind of. Oh, with those fields, like contacts. Yeah. You know, like so they were drums, but they were set up like a keyboard. So it's metaphors, you know. Or the... <laughs> 